This Engineering is Elementary digital how-to will show you how to create, use, and package your sail track from Lesson 3, Part 1 of Catching the Wind, Designing Windmills. The process of constructing the sail track involves a number of steps, but if done well the first time, your tracks can be stored and saved for future use. We recommend creating two complete sail tracks for one classroom. The directions here will tell you how to create one sail track. To construct one sail track for your classroom, you will need the following materials. Three 12 inch rulers, two for anchoring the sail tracks raft, and one for measuring. A large fan, box fans work the best. Two pieces of 20 pound gauge fishing line, each piece eight to 10 feet long cellophane tape, masking or duct tape, a foam tray sized at least four inches by six inches, as well as some additional scrap pieces of foam, two non-flexible plastic drinking straws, one craft stick for testing assembled rafts and track movement. The first step is to create the foam raft that will move along the finished sail track and hold students' sail designs. Begin by cutting a 4 inch by 6 inch rectangle out of the center of the foam tray. Next, attach two drinking straws to the bottom of the foam using cellophane tape like in this video. Place the straws along the longer edges of the raft four inches apart. The two straws should be straight and parallel. This helps the finished raft to glide smoothly along the completed track. The center of the foam raft is where the students will repeatedly insert their sail masts, which are craft sticks. The center of the raft needs to be reinforced with two extra layers of foam. Cut two squares of foam that are each about two inches square. You may be able to use scraps of foam from your original piece. Use duct or masking tape to tape one foam piece onto the center of the raft on one side. Then tape the other foam piece onto the center of the opposite side of the raft. Try to align the pieces on both sides as close to the center of the raft as possible. A slit in the center of the raft will hold the craft stick sail masts. It is important that the long side of the slit is parallel to the shorter, 4 inch edges of the raft, and that the slit is just large enough that an inserted craft stick fits snugly. Cut the slit through the three pieces of foam in the center of the raft, making sure to cut through all three layers. Making the sail track can be a time-consuming process, so packaging the track carefully is important. It will allow you to use the track from one year to the next. Begin by pushing the raft to one end of the track. Remove the tape holding the ruler to the table at this end, leaving the opposite ruler taped to the other table. 
pulled the free ruler and raft together and walk towards the ruler still taped down. As you walk, wrap the fishing lines around the ruler and raft by turning them in your hands as you go. Keep the fishing lines in between the two straws so they stay secure. This wrapping is similar to how a kite string is stored. Be careful that the fishing lines do not tangle as you wind them around the raft and ruler. When you reach the other ruler, untape it from the table. Then use a small piece of tape to secure the wrapped fishing line to the raft. Finally, carefully place the rolled up sail track and raft into a large envelope or plastic bag. After constructing the raft, you will create the sail track. First, place two of your rulers parallel and next to one another. Make two marks that are four inches apart. For example, on a 12 inch ruler, you can make marks on the four inch and eight inch lines. It is important that the marks you make are in the same locations on both rulers. That will keep the two fishing lines that will make up the sail track parallel and a constant width apart along its length. Next, cut two pieces of fishing line, which are each eight to 10 feet long. The fishing line used in this video has been colored red so it's more visible. Tie the end of one piece of fishing line directly over one of the markings on one of the rulers. Then tie an end of the second piece of fishing line over the other mark on the same ruler. Secure the fishing line knots to the ruler by taping over them with masking or duct tape. With the raft oriented so that the straws are facing down, feed one fishing line through one of the straws and the other fishing line through the other straw. Then tie the ends of each piece of fishing line over your marked lines on the other ruler. As before, secure each fishing line knot to the ruler using tape. Be careful when working with the fishing line. Be sure not to cross or tangle the two lines. When the entire track is fully extended, the raft should be in between the two rulers and the fishing lines should be straight and parallel to one another. Next, secure one end of the track to the edge of a desk or table by taping down one of the rulers using masking or duct tape. Then, move the second ruler to a desk or table of the same height at the other end of the room. It's essential that the raft is perfectly parallel to the floor beneath it and that the two fishing lines are completely level and taut as students use the sail track in this lesson. Before you tape the second ruler down, adjust its orientation by pivoting it on the table surface. 
This adjustment will remove any slack in the fishing lines, leaving them completely taut and level. This should also reorient the raft so it is level and parallel to the floor. Once you have the second ruler in a good position, tape it down with masking or duct tape. Place the fan at one end of the track behind the ruler. The center of the fan should be directly behind one of the pieces of fishing line so that the fan is slightly offset from the track. If the fan is directly centered on the track, it will produce too much turbulence. To test your sail track, push the raft back and forth with your fingers. There should not be any resistance or friction. When you push the raft and let go, it should move for some distance on its own. If you will be using two tracks in your classroom, make sure to position the second track at least three inches away from the first. Centering the fan directly between the two tracks should be able to create wind for both.